All right, I said I was gonna make another video. Try to explain a little bit of uh, what I did and how I got everything working. Um, this is my generator using an alternator, power generator, power house, be the proper word. Get a voltmeter, RPMs and runtime hours. Uh, it also will tell you uh, when it's time to change the oil according to its settings. So if we look at the alternator right here. You can see that uh, I changed the uh, stock blades out. Got this nice aluminum one. Um, you don't really have to. It was just a good deal. Got it. Got it. Put it on. Um, I did change the pulley. This is a uh, 5 8 wide, uh, and uh, for a better belt, more grip um, on these alternators, uh, you have to supply power to kick everything off. Now this particular alternator doesn't need it, it's self exciting, it will start up by itself. But I went ahead and put all this on here just in case um, I had to change alternator or whatever. Either way, so when you flip the switch on, it's like turning the key forward. This light is like your battery light on your dash telling you that you're, you're, uh, you're not charging your battery. The alternator is not putting out any power right now, and so the light is lit up. When we start the engine, the light will go off by itself. That's turning the key off on the car. Um, so this goes directly to the 12 volt of the battery. Uh, the another comes off of there, goes through, comes up to the side of the switch, through the switch, through the LED. This is an LED, so this works as both. Like if I used a regular light bulb, I'd have to put a diode and a light bulb. Since this is 12 volt LED, this is all I need. This works as a diode and the light bulb if i just had a light bulb when the engine was off the alternator would still pull a small amount of power off the battery and would drain the battery uh, quickly so with this setup i have the diode in there kill it there's no drain back um, plug for ac delco easy to get ground wire <clears throat> now i made the frame myself just welded up a frame and I did it so at first I started just so I could have something to work on the engines because I was making uh, the fourth gen <clears throat> modifications to one of these motors for uh, a racing motor and so I made a frame and I decided that later you know hey let's uh, make another frame and let's make a, a generator so we got a two inch pulley up here and we have a three inch pulley back here small uh, ratio difference um, you're going to get a little bit faster spin off the alternator than from the engine but not too much um, this is a kevlar belt um, this is the size that worked with my distance and everything my setup um, so two two inch on the alternator three inch on this um, pulley off the engine um, the only modifications i did to the engine itself you can see i did change the gaskets because i had to open it up and uh here's the big modification is uh change the uh connecting rod on the engine on the piston so you have to take the head off you have to take the well you have to take the valve cover off the head off the piston out uh you gotta remove the oil sensor uh low oil sensor shut off valve uh or shut off sensor the reason i did so is i put the aluminum um connecting rod on there that has a uh, has a better scoop on it so it's going to throw the oil up into the valves and everywhere around better it's also billet aluminum it's going to last longer be stronger um, compared to the, the stock one on this predator engine is just a piece of garbage it's not it's not going to last that's the worst thing on this engine everything else is nice i mean you have ball bearings in here on both sides uh, everything is really well made um, just that connecting rod is it's just terrible so the new one has sleeve bearings um, billet aluminum uh, the, on the scoop itself there's actually a hole that will force oil into the sleeve bearing so it'll, it'll lubricate it just does so much better at keeping this engine lubricated and re running at a higher rpm you still don't want to run extremely high rpm because the flywheel is too heavy uh, but i'm only at the max i run this at about 4,000 rpms um, but normally just for standard stuff, I can run it at about uh, 3,000, 
2500 3000 rpms and i can power a lot of stuff but uh my son was just out here using the electric hedger and i adjusted it brought it up to 4000 rpms you get this thing spinning faster and uh it's it, it doesn't put such a load on the engine um so you're like well why don't you just put a bigger pulley and you'll get more rpms well you can do that but that does put a heavier load on the engine it's harder for it to spin this is so close to a one to one you get a little bit more spin out of this a little bit um anybody can i used a pulley ratio calculator off the internet easy to do there's one that i use it shows the motion you can put the size of this pulley the size of that pulley and uh, how fast and it'll show you you know okay well that means this guy's been in this fast and it's been so long since i've done it i don't remember the exact numbers but it is spinning a little bit faster than what we're getting on the on the engine so we're getting a little bit of overdrive on here but not much on my some of my other original videos you saw i had a spring that was trying to pull this alternator tension wise that just did not work so what i did here this is a puller a puller that i was not using so you'd use this to pull like a water pump or, or brackets off the ends of stuff steering wheels everything's like that so it's it's a nice piece of steel it's got threads it's got a nice flat head that this can spin in so and it's pushed up perfectly to it i welded it here i put so you have a hole this is where the bolts would go so this is one this bolt comes down I welded this bolt through it I cut this excess bolt off I smashed this guy on here and use it as a turning so I can turn pushes this up pushes the alternator away from this guy and puts tension on the belt then I put this screw set in here that's welded goes into there and that keeps it from the engine vibrating from this slowly unwinding and belt coming loose and falling apart and all kinds of havoc <clears throat> so take a look at it you can see i left the uh, standard air filter I, I put a i did change the uh the jet i went ahead and increased the jet size tiniest bit I don't remember uh go power sports uh, dot com uh, they have all the different stuff uh, for this predator engine um I'll try to put a link in. I'll put a link in there so you can see it. Um, but you can turn this Predator 212 into a I already built one, another one in the I have it in the house and uh, multiple stages. Uh, you can do slowly, you know, have to buy everything at once. Some things you do need to kind of buy together so you're not doing the engine, taking it apart back and back uh, to it somewhere. Either way, that's how I ended up learning that I needed to, you know, change that connecting rod. Um, so like I said, I did change the jet just a little, little bit bigger, just to get a little bit more fuel in there. It seems to run a little happier. Uh, it, seemed, it seemed to be running lean. These these Harbor Freight uh, Predator engines seem to run a little on the lean side, and I'm just not a fan of that. Uh, I like it to run, uh, not necessarily rich, no, but uh, not not on the lean side either. You know, you got you got to try to get the perfect side, uh, amount of fuel to air ratio. Uh, is optimal uh, you know so that's the only reason I did that so main power coming through does go through a uh, fuse with a short connector here so if this falls off there's no way this wire is going to touch anything um, there's fuses multiple fuses throughout this to keep everything safe um, definitely need to have fuses on here and have them in the right places um, I should have put some kind of shield or something you know to protect yourself anybody from sticking their hands in here while it's running anything like that you know it's just going to cause trouble right now i only have a 400 watt inverter to strap to it but i can connect i've actually connected my big jumpers here and here for negative because uh, all of the frame is actually negative here and here big jumpers hooked it up to my wife's car when her battery was completely dead and uh started her uh that expedition right there <laughs> Started that guy right up with this, um, cranked it up, put it up to uh, about 4,000 RPMs, connected the, the jumper cables, and I hopped in her car real quick, so I wanted to know if this would start it, and it started her V8 5.4 engine, um, and then charged the battery, but that's the thing you got to remember, alternators are not designed to run full power all the time. 
this alternator here is a 60 amp alternator you can push 60 amps but you don't want to do it for a very long time you don't want to charge a completely dead battery with an alternator like this it's it's bad for the alternator to burn it up um, so maximum to be safe you should probably go this is 60 amps so I would say continuous I would probably only want to do something like um, 40 amps um, 30 amps would be optimal but you know I could probably push 40 amps continuous for a while um, but yeah that, that that's kind of on the high side so they, they expect that it to really not be pulling a lot of current for for a long time maybe 10 amps maybe 20 amps here and there spiking 60 amps you know when it's really got to be pushing something but for a short short amount of time you can get better alternators different alternators something that's made to run uh, longer stronger harder uh, this exact fit here uh, they make a 90 amp that I could pop in here um, of course to push that much current you're gonna have to have enough engine to be able to do it uh, this is a six six horsepower engine I believe it is uh, 212 cc I don't remember the horsepower uh, I believe it's a six horsepower engine though uh, could be wrong but it works uh, really well so you know you're, you're turning it off you just basically made a car you know charging system your alternator battery from the car here's the car engine spinning the alternator generating power all the regulation and everything is within the alternator um, so as you can see the battery's already 2.9 I had it running for a little bit um, it's still charged uh, when it's in the house, what I do is I leave it on a uh, trickle charger, keep the battery running. Um, Y'all yeah, seen it run on the last videos, so I really don't need to crank it up. Um, and I'm sure you know what an engine looks like running and sounds like running, so you, we can skip that. Um, you will notice a lot of people will look at the fins and they'll think that, hey, it should go this way. You know, it, it looks like it should go that way. It actually goes this way they're designed to uh to spin that direction which really throws you off it's like why why is that and what it's doing is it's pulling air directly in here and blowing it that way instead of pulling it from the front and blowing it into here because when you're pulling it from the front you you're having to, the air is going to get hot as it goes through the alternator so you're going to be blowing hot air through here so the best way is to pull the, the coolest air from outside in here and through there where you're, you're actually bringing cool air in you're cooling the alternator but you're cooling the regulator the, the rectifier everything in here you're cooling that first and then adding some cooling to the uh, coils and everything they, they, they can technically take a higher temperature than this device will be able to so the engine spins going counterclockwise um, so it, it will mess you up you, so you need to look at the alternator itself it'll tell you direction to spin counterclockwise or clockwise most alternators are going to run counterclockwise um, and that's just the way they are um, well let me see if I got that right because this is spinning counterclockwise this way I believe they still say it's counterclockwise um, because it's not looking uh, at it from this direction here it's looking at it from this direction um, I did a lot of reading. It's been a while. I know I mean I sound sure, but I'm just trying to make a quick video for you. Um, but I did a lot of reading, a lot of studying, talked to a lot of people to determine the correct direction that the alternator needs to spin. Um, it probably would generate power spinning the other direction, um, but like I said, you're going to cause probably overheating issues. So that's pretty much it. Just kind of let you see it take a look at it I did keep the quick cutoff so if you this this device here if you ever wonder what this little guy does you can put a push button as soon as this hits ground this stays ground and kills the engine until the engine stops spinning this loses power it shuts off I think it runs like like an SCR or something would so as soon as you kill it like if, you, if it's running and I go off on it's it's gonna kill it's really it's gonna kill the engine anyways it doesn't care that I went back on this thing is stuck on ground until there's no power left so they're really good to put on when you leave them on for go-karts because um, you can put just a simple wire going up to your steering wheel 
or somewhere close to you that you can just push button and you just push it and let go and that's going to kill the engine um, they have that normally connected to the low oil sensor so if the low oil the oil gets low this will hit it and once this hits it it'll it'll kill the engine the reason uh the the guys take them out on the go-karts and stuff is if you're taking a turn real hard it only takes that one little bit for that sensor to drop and your engine dies and you got to get up and you got to crank up the engine and all that so the main reason the other reason like i took it out and they had to take it out is when you upgrade that connecting rod it's it, it'll hit the sensor so the sensor has to come out um, when you upgrade that connecting rod it'll, it'll it, the sensor's in the way so comes out i uh, put basically the metal gasket on the inside ran the bolt through tighten this up with uh, some thread locker and uh hasn't leaked a drop so it's been perfectly fine i do have a critter somewhere in my garage or something he's he didn't chew on anything but he uh he went to the restroom on it so when i cranked it up uh it did not smell very nice so <laughs> that that definitely needs to probably become part of the thought process of how to clean this i can't just hose this thing off you know with uh with that power inverter I, if i soak that with with water hose it's, it's not gonna be good it'll definitely be dead possible fire um it's just not a good idea if you don't want to do it so right now i'm gonna have to hand clean this guy and uh try to get it <laughs> clean again and then get rid of the little buggers that are doing their business on my stuff like i said luckily they didn't chew any wires um so that's 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 a good good wire uh, i don't know maybe they may have touched something and didn't like the, the little nip you'll get i mean you just, you won't get much shock off that but if you happen to have like your hand here you know it's like a nine volt battery but it's 12 volts so you're going to get a little bit more ump to your tongue if you did it like a nine volt battery does <sighs> i'm exhausted i've been out here with doing chainsaw work on cutting up trees and other stuff like that and so i might be rambling on but i'm just trying to let y'all get a good look at it this is the uh, overhead valve version uh it's not the Hemi. Uh, I didn't realize they had the Hemi until after I got this one. I wish I did. The uh, Hemi would have been just neater to have. Better, as eh, debatable. Probably a little quieter. A um, little more ump to it. But uh, you can still get all the hop up parts and stuff like that. These engines are awesome to turn into little go kart engines or uh, mini bike engines. Uh, they, like I said, GoPowerSports.com. They have all the stuff you'll need. They'll ship it to you. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, a lot of videos on uh, how to upgrade and stuff, but you have to be very careful. You really need to follow. Uh, so look at all the videos, follow the instructions, do it very proper. Um, for example, uh, on the side cover. So you'll find the torque specifications for the side cover works fine on the standard setup. But let's say you upgrade everything like I did on the other engine. I torqued these down. I don't remember the torque now, but I torqued them to the specifications. And of course, going in a pattern, did everything properly. The bolts started to come loose. Luckily, I saw that and I shut it off. I saw oil drip and shut it off before anything went just terrible wrong uh, I talked to the guys and they said yeah you need to over torque them a little bit or you can put some of the blue Loctite on there uh, you don't want to put the red Loctite on here uh, unless you never want to open the case again and you're just willing to throw the engine away when something goes wrong with it um, then red Loctite away but I, I don't suggest that blue Loctite's fine I didn't even use the blue Loctite I just uh, adjusted the torque I don't remember. I wish I could give you some numbers. I really do. Um, but just a little bit tighter. You know, just a little bit more torque is all it took. And they stopped backing out. Um, but like I said, you can always use the blue lock tight, run it to torque, and let it dry. Let it fully cure. And uh, it should hold it just fine. Um, so many upgrades and stuff. But just for the generator. I just went, like I said, went with the connecting rod, 
so that I can get the longevity out of the engine. Um, everything, you know, everything else making it hopped up is, is not necessary on, on this just for a generator. Um, the other engine, it's completely ready, hopped up. Uh, I think stage four, I think is what they go to. Um, really looks nice. I just, I'm dying to put it on a mini bike. I really am. Uh, I mean, it's just a monster. When you, when you, when you, when you build this thing up and you put the aluminum billet uh, flywheel and you adjust the, the uh, magneto because it puts out, it, it, that, that new flywheel has so much uh, more stronger magnets that they'll, they'll basically burn up your magneto. You have to gap the magneto a little bit further away. Um, and then you update uh, the uh, camshaft and uh, then you end up having to adjust the valves again. But you got a performance cam and you got performance um, push rods, you got performance connecting rod, you got your performance um, rocker arms and your performance flywheel and your uh, performance upgrades to your carburetor, which you have to do when you when you when you when you do your your whole engine setup, and you 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 have this nice big air filter coming in. Well, you're not you're definitely not getting enough fuel there, so you have to get the new uh, jets and and they just unscrew and you knock out the immer immersion tube. Uh, immer <laughs> Somebody knows it. I'm sure they're going to spell it. Um, you'll knock that out. Put in the new one. Put in your new. Uh, uh, jet put the ball back on tighten it up you crank it up and you'll know like you should be able to run run rev it and if it if it once it's warmed up if it doesn't want to it, you'll know something's wrong um but when i did when i did it i didn't do the jet at first i just wanted to see i could not get it to rev all the way up it was just sucking so much air not getting enough fuel it would ball ball it bogged down just bog down bog down Maybe that's why they called it bogging down this bog, because that's what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, I'm hot and tired and delirious, so y'all just hang with me. <laughs> uh, adjusted everything I could. Changed the spark plug on it. Um, got a Bosch Platinum plug on it. What does that say? 6943.85. If somebody really, really needs to know the boss plug I've got, um, just put it in the comments. I'll take it out and get you the number. Um, yes, it still has a plastic fan connected to the standard flywheel. It's, it's fine for this, you know, with the, the, the highest RPMs being at about 4,000, it's fine. Uh, you don't really want to go over that. I like keeping it around three to thousand to thirty five hundred I feel safer with that um, just because of the flywheel uh, everything else should be able to hold it but you spin that flywheel that that big heavy flywheel too fast it, it definitely can come apart it's it's dangerous so yeah if you want to make a race in one and you're gonna go over uh, 4,000 rpms uh, you have you have to change that flywheel um, once you change everything out, I can push that other engine probably up to about seven, eight thousand RPMs. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a beast. They're, they're wonderful little motors. Lots of fun to work on. Lots of fun to learn and build. Um, uh, like I said, they, they'll actually build it up for you. Go Power Sports if you don't have the, the uh, knowledge or the tools, and and you just want it done properly, um, you can get it. They'll, they'll, from what I know, they'll build you a. a racing engine they'll build you a whole go they sell the whole go-karts mini bikes just all kinds of neat stuff you're not going to go there to get your lawnmower fixed you're going to go to them to get some performance parts even some stock parts you know you can um, they don't have them for every engine but they have them for the most popular engine uh, that a lot of people are using right now this one and some of the bigger ones there's a step up from this that's even bigger that they uh, started putting out some hop-up parts for um, the Hemi, they have that, and they have uh, parts for, for the Hemi. Um, just uh, all kinds of stuff. I, I think I've told you a whole lot. Ran on here for a good 30 minutes. Probably bored the garbage out of some of you, and then you ran off by now. Got the information you needed. Uh, just uh, shoot me a message or something. Leave it up there. If uh, you have a question, and uh, 
subscribe or uh, shoot an upvote, however you like it, thumbs up. Uh, appreciate your time. Like I said, if you have any questions, I try to get back and I try to respond when I can, but you know how it is being super busy. So, that is it. I'll let you guys have at it for now. And, uh, I think I'm done working. I'm going to go back in, take it easy for the rest of my Sunday, and uh, enjoy my time off. I hope you enjoyed my video. Follow directions on your engine, fuel mixtures, fuel additives, oil change times. You'll make your engine last long, brake in properly under the right loads, uh, different RPMs. These engines do not come broken. You do need to brake them in properly. Uh, Alright guys, we'll make another video soon.